Hey there guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be building a meal planner in Notion. This is going to be made up of three different databases that all connect together. And I'm gonna show you every step of the way how to create this so that next time you go shopping, you can go into the shopping store with your Notion shopping list that tells you every ingredient that you need for your upcoming meals that you have planned. And you can also plan out meals ahead of time with this system so that you basically don't have to think about what you're going to be cooking that night. If you just plan it once in a week, makes it a whole lot easier than just scrambling every single day trying to figure out what you're going to cook. So there are also lots of other ways that you can look at this. It could be a way to save recipes. Um, that's another use case of this. It keeps all your recipes in one place and makes them sortable and whatnot. So there's, there's tons of advantages to this meal planning system, and I think you're gonna love it. So let's get into building this meal plan in Notion. So as I mentioned, this is going to be three pages. I'm going to create this home page right off the bat, and then I'm going to add in some pages. So to create a page, just hit slash and then start typing page. Once page is highlighted, hit enter or return. And right here, I'm just going to create our first page and I'm gonna call it ingredients. And we're gonna click the table database just to turn the full page into a table. Okay, and we're gonna add an icon for ingredients. Let's just go with the carrot. Then we're going to create another page. Again, I'm just gonna hit slash, then I'm gonna type page, enter, and we're going to type in meal plan. Meal plan. And this will be the calendar. Next, I'm going to create a recipes page. So I'm gonna hit slash P-A-G-E, enter recipes. And this can be the paper clips. Oh, and I need to turn this into a table. I also need to turn the meal plan page into a table. All right, so now we have these three databases created. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and start adding columns to these that are relevant. So let's start with ingredients. For ingredients, we're just gonna name the name column ingredient. And then next you can create a property type of select and just make it store. And this will be the store where you're gonna pick the ingredient up. And if you wanted to, you could get even more in depth and you could create another one and call it aisle. And then you could enter all the aisle numbers in here so that you can be even more efficient when you're out uh, grocery shopping. I'm just gonna stick with store for now and we're just gonna enter a few of the nearby stores that I know are good for picking up ingredients for uh, for me in particular, and you'll want to put your stores in here. Next, you're going to want to create another column that is also a select. And you're going to want to name this status. And this is what's going to decide if you're putting something on your shopping list or not. So let's add some statuses in here right now. So I'm going to add one for out of stock. So this just means that we don't have it in stock. Uh, in stock would mean, of course, that this ingredient is in stock. So you would think that these are the only two you need, but I like to add a shopping list status. That way I can add something to my shopping list because that's kind of somewhere between out of stock and in stock. So something might be out of stock, but we don't necessarily need to put it on our shopping list, but it's also nice to know if it's out of stock. So there's going to be a few situations where you're gonna to wanna to use this status column. That is when you're throwing away a package or something and you're using the last of something, that's when you move it to out of stock. Uh, if you are planning something in the future, you're gonna to wanna to add it to your shopping list. And if it's already in stock or you're putting it away when you get home, that's where you're gonna to wanna to put in stock. So now that we've got this all set up, we need to start entering some ingredients, but what ingredients are we going to enter? Well, I'm going to actually go over to our recipes and I'm gonna add a recipe in here that we can uh, upload the ingredients for so that we know what we want on our shopping list. So here I'm going to type in recipe and right here we're going to create a recipe for Szechuan beef noodles. So. I'm going to enter that in here and I'm going to turn the second column into a course selector. So meal type and let's just go with breakfast, lunch and dinner. 
and we can change the colors of these because these aren't color dependent necessarily. So we'll just keep them all gray for now and we'll make that dinner. And then I like to add a column as well for uh, status. And this is just here to identify if we've cooked the meal before and if it's a tried and true good meal or if it's more just something that's on our wish list to try. So here I'm just gonna type wish list as one of the options. And this is just a way to kind of pin recipes if you come across a recipe that you wanna try, but you don't necessarily know if you are going to actually enjoy it yet and it's more of an experimental thing. And then you can have a status of tried and true. And tried and true is good to have because if you are planning a meal for somebody or if you are even planning a meal for yourself and you just don't wanna deal with not knowing how to do it, um, you can filter for just the tried and true meals when you are uh, adding in all of your recipes later on and you wanna go to filter. You know, if you go up there, you can add a filter that just shows you tried and true recipes. And that way you can get that viewpoint as well. And if you just wanted to see experimental meals, maybe you could also just filter for the wish list items. Moving on, I'm just going to hit the plus button up here and we're actually going to create a relation now. We're gonna create a relation to the ingredients database. So let's click on the ingredients database or you can type in ingredients up here and it should show you that database that we've already created. Click on that and then hit create relation. And we're just gonna call this you guessed it, ingredients. Now that this ingredients column is created, let's go back over to our ingredients and create some ingredients here. You'll notice that it also generated this column, so I'm just going to uh, call it related recipes. And we're going to add all of the ingredients that we need for our beef noodle. Now that all of these are listed, I'm going to select the store that they're associated with. And then I'm gonna select a status. So if I have any of these in stock already, I'm just gonna select in stock. So let's just say that I have the ramen noodles on hand and I have the ground beef. I just need all of these items right here, soy sauce on up. Well, in that case, I would just add them all to my shopping list, especially if this is a recipe that I have on my meal plan and we will get the meal plan added into this process in just a minute. Now I'm gonna relate all of these to the beef noodle. Now at this point, we're just seeing all of the data for the ingredients, but if I wanted to, I could hit add a view. We could create a list and I'm just gonna name it shopping list. I'm gonna hit create. And here, if I wanted to, I could hit filter, add a filter, and I could go to status is shopping list. So then it's only gonna show me everything that's on the shopping list right here. And I just wanna make sure that I select the properties so that they're all listed here so that I can see everything. And you can also rearrange the order of the properties so that shopping list is on the front or store or whatever you want to be in the front. And if you want to, as you go through the store, you can check items off just by clicking on them, clicking into the shopping list and changing the status to in stock. If I wanna to toggle back to my overall ingredients list, I can just click up in this upper left-hand corner here, default view, and then I'm back with everything that I need to see. Next, I'm gonna start creating the meal plan. So let's click on meal plan, go in here and name the name column meal. We're gonna change this column to a select, and then we're going to name it meal type. We're gonna call it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then we're gonna hit add view and I'm gonna create a calendar view and we're gonna call that meal plan. And then from here, I can just click in any of these boxes and I can decide which days I want meals on. So we can hit plus and I can just write in breakfast. And then I can click plus again, we can go lunch and we can hit plus again and do dinner. And as you can see now, it's going to have a breakfast, lunch, and a dinner all on the second. So if I wanted to plan these out, all I would have to do is enter into, let's say dinner, add a property. And then from here, I'm going to create a relation to the recipes database. I'm gonna hit create relation, and we're gonna call this recipe. And this is going to be the recipe that we're going to eat for dinner. So I can just select any of my dinner recipes from here 
And as you can see, it'll pull up our Szechuan beef ramen noodles and it'll have that for dinner. So let's just change the properties here to recipe so that I can see exactly what we are having for dinner and what we're having for lunch and what we're having for breakfast. And you can really start to build on these recipes that you have added in here and the ingredients that you commonly use. If you want to create a stronger interface where you got to see all of this all in one view, I'd recommend just creating a homepage like this, putting a divider in like I'm doing right now. I'm actually gonna put two dividers around the menu for our meal planning menu. So at this point, I'm just gonna hit slash create. I'm gonna click on this create linked database and from here, we're going to click on ingredients and I'm going to add my shopping list view once again. So let's call it shopping list. We're gonna hit create and we're going to make sure that it filters status of shopping list. So it's only going to show us our shopping list items. We're going to go to properties now and make sure that status is listed here and related recipe if I wanna see what recipe is associated with this particular shopping list. And then, like I said, as you go through the shopping list, you can just click on these different items and change them to in stock, and then they'll disappear off the shopping list. Next, we're gonna do slash create linked database again, and we're going to click on meal plan, and we're going to hit add view. We're going to click the calendar, and I'm going to call it calendar meal plan view and I'm gonna hit create. And now you'll see that it shows all of our meal plans. So it's just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we're going to want to make sure that we click on properties and enable at least recipe for sure so that we can see our recipes right here. And if you wanted to, you could just add in an item on any of these given days, like breakfast for instance, and then you can click on your recipes and add to that. Next, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom here and hit slash create linked database and we're going to create a recipes database. So I'm gonna to link to that recipes database. We're gonna hit add view. And for this, it's good to maybe do like a gallery view. So you can hit create and here it will show you a picture of whatever it is you're cooking. So if you wanted to, you could put a picture in here. I'm just going to Go with uh, unsplash right now. Let's just do image unsplash beef noodle. Let's see if unsplash has a picture of it. So as you can see, once I click out, uh, this is the gallery view. It basically shows all of your recipes in like a gallery grid. And if you have pictures of them entered in, like right here, it'll show that picture that's associated with it. You can even hover over this, hit reposition, and then drag that around so that it's perfectly centered or however you want it to be, and then hit save position. And I recommend adding icons to these as well. I don't know if I wanna do the cat, the ramen's probably a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Another thing you might wanna do is click on this uh, button right here, go to properties, and then go to meal type, as well as ingredients and then if you wanted to you could add a property here and it could be a roll-up you could write planned four now i can click into this szechuan beef ramen noodles go to planned four hit the relation to meal plan and then change the property to date and then that will show the days that it's planned for so if I wanted to, I could go to properties here and I don't necessarily have to turn on this related to meal plan and get that redundant dinner and breakfast, but I could tick that off and turn plan for on and see the two days that I have this meal plan for right now, which it makes no sense that they're planned for uh, two days in a row uh, or that it's planned for breakfast. So I'm actually going to remove this here from breakfast because that's not necessarily accurate but at this point you should have a functional meal plan where you can capture new recipes uh, check out your shopping list take items off of your shopping list plan for meals in the future before i wrap this video up let's talk about a few workflow tips so if you're planning a new meal all you have to do is hit the plus button type in the name of the meal so let's just say we're planning a lunch i'm going to delete this untitled one here let's say dinner as well 
If it bothers you that these are coming in in a different order, you can always go into the date section and hit include time. And then you can include a time on all of these so that it's in order of the time. So if I wanted dinner to be at like 8 p.m., I could put 8 p.m. in there. And then that's gonna move dinner down below the others. So let me just show you an example here. If I include time on breakfast, let's say it's 8 a.m. And then let's go into lunch and make the time 12 p.m. As you can see, it has arranged those in order properly. From there, let's just say you've clicked and entered all of those in. You can just click on the particular one that you are planning and you can click on the re empty recipe section and then you can add any of the recipes from your recipe database. Now, in order to add recipes, of course, you're just gonna hit new right here and you can add a name for your recipe. And here uh, on the relations, when you're looking up a recipe, you're gonna wanna add the ingredients in right here. If you already have them, that's great, but if not, you're gonna need to go over and insert all of your ingredients here just by hitting plus going in and creating a new ingredient. So let's just say carrots is an ingredient. And then we could go in and relate it to your new recipe and give it a store. Another way to enhance this is to go into your recipes and actually add the information that's necessary down here. So I could do ingredients and portion sizes. And I could enter something like four tablespoons of soy sauce. And then if I hit enter a couple more times, I could create a list of instructions so that when it's actually time to cook the meal, I can just come down here and I can read off the ingredients and I can see the instructions. Those are best to turn into uh, headings actually. So let's do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. It helps out a ton, it helps the channel grow, and I really appreciate it. Leave a comment below if there was any confusion. I'm happy to help. If you have any specific questions, just leave them below. I'll try to chime in there and get those answered. And if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe so that we know that this is the type of video that gets more subscribers because we're gonna focus on making videos that get more subscribers and that subscribers want to have us make. So just go ahead and subscribe if you want to signal to us that you liked this video and you want to see more. And of course, hit the notification bell if you do want to catch future videos, because otherwise you probably won't be notified. Before you go off and do something else, I recommend you check out our Notion playlist as well. We have a Notion playlist full of plenty of other Notion videos, and you might have a question that gets answered in there. So you never know. Definitely give that a look. And then also you can click up here to subscribe to our channel. All right, bye for now.